Morning, coaches. Thanks for coming for today's Coach SG e workshop, Coaching Badminton, Developing Fitness and Mixed Doubles Play. All right, before we proceed, some housekeeping matters. Okay, we have muted all of your mic. However, we would strongly encourage you to also uh, keep posting your questions on your this uh, chat box, Zoom chat box. Yep, as you listen to the presenters present. Okay, so today we have a sharing session by two coaches, two badminton coaches actually, uh, Coach Jerome and Coach Lai. Okay, so basically this is actually a CDG sharing session because both coaches, uh, they have went for this uh, Badminton World Federation World Coaching Conference 2019 in Switzerland last year. So today, Jerome will be sharing how to develop badminton specific fitness. And Coach Lai will be sharing the different formation strategies of mixed doubles play. So <coughs> Coach Lai will be presenting in Chinese. However, not to worry, we will follow up with an English translation thereafter. So Jeron, both Jeron and Coach, Coach Jeron and Coach Lai, they were both former national players with lots of competitive play experience. And Coach Lai herself, Coach Lai herself uh, used to also coach the national uh, Singapore national team in the 1990s. Okay, so without further ado, let's welcome Coach Jerome first to share about developing badminton-specific fitness. Coach Jerome, please. Yeah, hi everyone. Uh, sorry, before I start, uh, allow me to share the slides on my end. Okay, hi everyone. So um, today basically I'm going to share some of the ways to uh, craft your badminton uh, fitness program and at the same time share some of the uh, experiences I have uh, over last year for this uh, coaching conference. Hey, by the way, um, if it's the uh, first time we met, I'm um, Jeron. Uh, bas basically, I'm ex-national player. I uh, have been doing uh, running badminton school for close to a decade now. So uh, very honored to be here and Hope that today we can evaluate each other. So without further ado, uh, I will move on straight to the sliders. Okay, so uh, I will give a very quick overview uh, and some experience sharing of the uh, conference I uh, attend last year. So these are some of the um, uh, main topics uh, that uh, I'm covering. Just a very quick one. Then uh, feel free to comment in the box, uh, comment box if any of the topic uh, you want me to slightly uh, talk a bit more on a certain topic, uh, please comment in the box. Uh, yeah, I'm more than willing to share. Now, first, uh, I start off the day with, um, uh, with this uh, very uh, motivational guy. It's called Alistair. He shared about the seven key uh, aspects of being a great coach that separate you from a normal coach to a great coach. So he's even shared about some of the routine, of course, all the values. and you know, Actually, you can find all this in the YouTube. There's a full video on this. Uh, next uh, is a very interesting topic as well. It's talking about the talent ID and also introducing the bio bending while doing the fitness uh, test and identifying the talent. So this is a very interesting topic uh, where most of us uh, or a lot of people or a lot of organizations across the world, we are just using an absolute uh, uh, age number. For example, 10 years old, 15 years old, 20 years old. But for, um, this is a funded research by uh, BWF where they, um, uh, there's a research on all the youth and, and the young one where they will use the percentage of your maturity to, to, give, to, to gauge your fitness level rather than just the absolute number. So definitely this is a topic for another day, but uh, it's a very interesting topic. Yeah. Then we move on to, of course, on the court, uh, we have Lars. Basically, he's a very uh, reputable coach in Denmark. He also worked with Peter Gate uh, and, and, and to achieve quite a very remarkable result as well. So uh, basically what he, he shared about is the, a simplified version uh, to break down the complexity of tactical training where um, in single play in specific. So he did give example and stuff. Also, this is uh, the video, the full video is all on YouTube. 
Uh, next, we move on to uh, the, the parent, uh, parent badminton, which is very, very interesting. They got in, uh, I believe, one of the top uh, nation that is dominating the, the wheelchair uh, for badminton. Uh, and he did share some multiple feeding, even footwork while you're using a wheelchair. Also, uh, some strengthening exercises specifically for uh, parent, uh, badminton. So I think it's very value adding to us because uh, over the last year, I, I saw some of the uh, counterparts from Singapore as well. They, they went through, they are, they are, they are dueling with uh, parent mm -hmm. badminton. So I think it's a great opportunity. Okay, day two, we have uh, this thing called a speed station, which uh, we are, all the participants are put into uh, about eight stations, if I'm not wrong. Then each station will be like 10 minutes. So we will uh, keep rotating that, 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 that 10 minutes. So uh, it's a very complex but meaningful one. Uh, first of all, I can share with you the, uh, there's a sharing on the player recovery. They have talking about heart rate, talking about uh, work and rest time, which is uh, very, uh, important for coaches or even uh, event organizer, uh, especially for badminton. Then they also have like injury prevention program uh, uh, by also, once again, it's a funded project by uh, BWF. They very good sharing as well on how to prevent, how to do warm up, cool down properly. And next they also have uh, uh, the, the speed station cover the air badminton. Uh, which is, I, I think, nothing new to most of you here. You know what's air badminton, basically it's playing the outdoor. And just one fun fact, um, do you mind, uh, which country, answer, uh, just a fun fact, uh, which country did BWF place the air badminton research in? Yeah, so uh, you can comment in the box there, uh, in, in, in the box below, uh, make a guess, uh, which country did uh, this uh, BWF fund this project to? Maybe you just give like uh, another like 30 seconds, you can comment the box, Make a guess, make a guess, like which country? Uh, okay, yeah, make a guess. Yeah, I saw Spain, I saw Indonesia, I saw this one, C. <laughs> yeah, another like 10 seconds, maybe we can right, just... Coaches, uh, yeah. just make a guess. Uh, yeah, Jerome will review the answer in a short while, yeah. Yeah, Switzerland, good try. Uh, SG, okay. Any more, any more? 10 more seconds. England. Okay. Okay, 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 time's up. Okay, basically the answer is Singapore. Basically it's Singapore. I, I was surprised as well. I was there uh, to know that. Yeah. Um, and it's basically a uh, five years project uh, back then. Five years back is uh, doing NTU. Yeah, that's what I know. So I'm very proud uh, to raise the flag up high. Okay, next one, uh, we'll talk about, yeah, we also have like some uh, biomechanics sharing, like especially how, 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 how what the exercises, what the implication of doing it wrongly on the knees, on, on some parts of your body, which is very uh, helpful when developing your exercises as well. Uh, of course, we also have uh, Zhao Yao Lei, uh, Zhao Yun Lei, sorry, um, which is very uh, popular in, 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 in the doubles, mixed double play. And you also share the roles for female in the mixed double. This one, uh, later, uh, Coach Lai will be covering uh, some part of it, uh, and I'll leave it to her. Then, uh, of course, uh, Lance again. Um, the second day, on court, he shared about the differences uh, when you're considering a man or woman single, down to training, down to uh, game play. And of course, uh, we also have some uh, mental training, uh, some mental uh, sharing as well by this uh, Dr. Wendy. He also shared how to prepare a player uh, pre or post or during competition. What are the things that need to take a note of? Uh, we also have some motivation talk. Once again, by this, uh, this guy called Alista. He shared about what is his daily uh, routine and schedule. Uh, this thing called a champion-minded uh, uh, way of thinking. And so I, I think it's very motivational. Uh, something for every coaches uh, uh, to really look into. Yeah, so I move.
All right, coaches, uh, looks like Jerome got disconnected. So we give him a bit of time for him to reconnect back. Yep, thank you. Yeah, that's okay. 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 Huh? All right, coaches. Uh, just now I had a short chat with Jerome. Uh, it appears that on her on his side there was a short circuit. So uh, we'll give him a couple of minutes to try and uh, re-establish the connection. Uh, if not, we will have uh, Lai Jiaolian to present her part first. Okay. Yeah. So thank you for your patience. Hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can hear you. Ah, yeah, okay, okay. So sorry about that. The short circuit. Yeah, I will resume my presentation. Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah, so sorry about what happened earlier on. So basically, um, the topic today I'm going to cover will be about the work rest timing. Uh, for work rest uh, ratio for for. The, players as a coach when you develop them. So based on a study, right, um, the, the study shows that what we have been doing uh, usually over um, our practice as a coach or, as, as a, or, or the tournament organizer, right, it's uh, definitely need room for improvement where, where they need more proper rest for the matches. So um, some of the method, uh, some of the things that uh, this research uh, did is that they select uh, some of the top youth player uh, in India to do the testing. They put them in the circuit match play. 
and they do some key data. Basically, first we talk about heart rate. So they have um, a heart rate uh, for track for pre matches right after the match of this pose and of course the uh, 30 minutes after the match ends. Study shows that um, both for male and female, right, uh, 30 minutes uh, is not sufficient to go back to the, uh, the, the pre-matches heart rate. Uh, as you can see uh, over the left hand side of the graph here. Of course, we, we also cover the plasma lactate. Uh, by the way, for, for some of you, if you're not uh, sure what is plasma lactate, basically it's the uh, the substance that uh, the mus the body will create where uh, there's no more energy uh, in your muscle that will create to sustain your keep you, to keep you going. So, same thing after thirty minutes, right? It's not sufficient. That's what they they they, they have researched on based on data. And of course, we talk about the sodium level. Also, uh, once again, um, it's encouraged that you need to um, put in some. Uh, uh, sodium level drink, for example, like could be just 100 plus to make sure that uh, the electrolytes is there to keep the athlete going. Next also, he shared about the work rest time. On average, uh, the rally for uh, male and female, uh, 6.8 to 6.2 uh, uh, average. So uh, what is the average time that they have? Basically, it's about uh, 200% uh, 100% more for rest time in a typical match for men and women single. So, of course, um, based on that, right, uh, we will use the, uh, the research that they have, the data, it will not have, like, you need to have more than 30 minutes. Most of them, the high-intensity exercise is a very short and intense effort um, during your designing of your uh, physical activity. Uh, don't need to be too long, but need to be very high-intensity more towards the aerobic way of doing. Then of course, for the tournament uh, organizer, what they uh, understand is that uh, you need to really uh, give adequate rest time. Because a typical youth player, right, uh, when they go for competition, right, you will see them <clears throat> taking up about sometimes two or even up to three events. Could be different age group, be uh, even uh, doubles and single mixture. So, uh, Sometimes they have a lot of uh, matches which is very close together, which is not uh, ideal for them for recovery. La. So that, this one you must think. And of course, the, the implication of uh, recovery uh, and training. So um, what uh, the data shows that uh, for all this interval training, when you plan for it, right, you must uh, go according to the work rest ratio which is what you should see in the slide 0 0.5 and 0 0.4 so that uh, it's very relevant to what is being uh, used and, and, and the intensity during a real match. Okay, so the impact of my coaching is that uh, based on all this uh, learning, uh, I use all these combined variables right, to create a, you know, a more comprehensive training program uh, in a more scientific approach. Right? So today I'm going to share with you, uh, we're going to craft the uh, program together. We're going to craft this together. So what I can, what I can encourage is that uh, not just badminton, even um, uh, beyond badminton coaches, right, you, can, you can craft it together. You can take a pen and paper if you want to. So by the end of this session, you have a very, very simple and, and logical uh, uh, fitness program. So this five-step system I created, right? First, I will talk about, will, will be the A for area improvement. You need to select the area of improvement that you will wish to improve can be uh, speed, can be power, can be agility, uh, just some area that you understand your player that is lacking of. Next will be exercises. So, for example, if you want him to improve your speed, then you probably want to design some sprinting training or, or, or some uh, a short distance run uh, to improve the speed. Or if it's longer distance, you want to improve endurance, could be uh, beyond 400 meters yeah, or at least 400 meters. Okay, next G will be goal. You need to create a goal for them. Uh, of course, the goal right, uh, must be very uh, realistic and uh, must be something that uh, is agreeable on. Next, we will go to stages. You need to craft the stages uh, uh, by doing so so that uh, 
you can monitor their progress. Last but not least will be T for the timeline. You need to set a timeline of how to, how long do you take based on uh, the frequency of uh, uh, time you are with them. Okay, so let's move into the area improvement. My example, um, I will choose endurance for now. So as you can see, it would be ideal if you have conducted a fitness test uh, before that, or of course you can just based on impression of what is the thing that you think they, they are lacking of. So, so my case will be endurance. The exercises, right, um, I will choose this very famous, uh, definitely nothing new to all the badminton coaches out there, which is the six corner footwork. Uh, and so as you can see on the left hand side, the legend there, the athlete will stand in center. So the shuttlecocks will all be on the top right hand corner, as you can see. Then of course, the next uh, targeted corner will be other five area. So the objective is to shift the shutter, expand the shutter to the five, then you collect the shutter back in. There's nothing new for badminton players. So this is just some demonstration of the, of the exercises, which is what I mentioned earlier on. So basically you spread the shutter out to all the five corners. But why is it called six corner, huh? but it's only, only five corners because the shutter starts with one corner already. So what you do is you will spread to all the five corners and you will collect collapse the shutter back in. Yeah, that's the last one. Notice you need to go back to the center every single time. Yeah, so there's definitely nothing new, just some sharing. Definitely you can make sure you come back to the center every single time. So uh, let's talk about uh, setting of goal. So uh, I share this, uh, this thing called the Smarter, which is uh, what is in our BWF level one uh, 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 course. You share about Smarter. Smarter basically it's a, a guideline for you to uh, set a goal for a player. So I'm just go a very quick one. First specific, yes, uh, it's very specific. Uh, this is uh, the exact thing to be doing. Six corner full work uh, will be measured by. Next thing will be, talking about the M for measurable. For me, I measure by time. Okay, how long it takes to do it. Next will be A for accepted. So, uh, like I mentioned earlier on, it must be something that is uh, realistic and accepted by the players. Uh, usually, you can uh, take references for other player that is doing better than him or, you know, some, some form of recognition. Next will be R for recorded. I would say you can create a list or, you know, just WhatsApp exchange message will also be fine. End of the day, it must be recorded every single time when you do somewhere to refer to. Next will be time. You need to set a timeline on how long you need to achieve that goal. So that will depend on your training frequency, I would say. For example, uh, my case, I see him twice a week. So I set according to twice a week frequency. E for uh, evaluate. So you need to track the result, monitor the result, whether is it too far away uh, on track or could be some contingency plan there where you know some injuries happen you will not know next or definitely will be r for reversible um in the event where it's really injured or some some things changes you could want to change the exercise or even uh, set a difficulty for the goal yeah okay uh so my current case right uh he's doing 42 seconds then what my ideal target for him is 40 seconds, less than 40 seconds for that exercises you saw early on. So my goal will be um, two months. Two, within two months, uh, he must achieve that goal, meaning you must cut by about two seconds. So based on that understanding, uh, what technique you need to do, right? We talk about staging. When you do a stages for that reason, set the stages. Okay, you must, you must understand. If you do the entire exercise at one go, the fastest you could do is 42 seconds for now. So in order to up their speed and have that intensity, right, um, you need to break down uh, not the full exercise. So for this case, I break down in 50%. I mean, it's very subjective. It could be lesser, could be more, depends on how, what you want the uh, outcome to be. So the, when you're breaking up, right, what you did is you can up the intensity because by doing lesser, they can... Uh, they are probably fitter to do the intensity and drop the volume, which is just 50%. So meaning to say that 
what I set the goal, right, for, for, the, for them, right, it's instead of doing the end, sorry, I just paused first, huh? so later I'll, I'll, I'll play again. So instead of doing the entire exercises, right, um, I will put that in three level. Right now it's in level two, less than 45 seconds. So when I break down to 50%, right, all the exercises per set, they just need to do half, which is 22 seconds for my case, uh, if you are working towards level two. So right now, uh, I wish to move into level three, okay, which is highlighted in red. That's my goal. So by doing 40 seconds, the intensity, right, uh, if I do in half, right, he should be doing less than 20 seconds uh, per set. And that's definitely more achievable because it's just 50% of the entire exercises. Okay, so as you can see, I will play the video again. Yeah, so what he's trying to do now, he are just doing collapsing the shutter instead of expand and collapse. Okay, right now he's just collapsing the shutter. Yeah, there's some fumble there. Yeah. So basically by doing that, right, you can keep the intensity high by keeping the volume down. So uh, it's more achievable. And it's very relevant to the game as well. Okay, next. Uh, so how to do by stage? Uh, so you see in yellow is level two, right? So that's that is current, uh, is current uh, performance. So as you can see, when I do the levering, right? One, two, and three, you need to have uh, stages uh, by decreasing the rest time, by decreasing the rest time. So for this case, I divide into three stages, one, two, and three. So you can realize every stages, when you move to one to two or two to three, right, the, the differences is the rest time percentage. So I give you my scenario. Right now, I have to work him from level two to three. So definitely, I will take level three as a reference. So I will plan for six sets of 20 seconds. He should keep everything below 20 seconds <clears throat> for a total of six sets when I do with him per session. So if you start from stage one, which it's 300% rest, meaning to say that you will do for one set 20 seconds and you will rest for 60 seconds. And you will do that for six times. You will see how many times out of the six sets, right? how many sets out of the six, right? You can achieve that 20 seconds timing. And of course, any point of time, right? This bucket athlete, right, able to fulfill all the six, right? Then you move on to stage two, which is just 200% rest time at 40 seconds. And that goes for stage three, which is 100%. 20 second exercises, 20 second rest. So that is uh, something that is trackable of their progress. So let's talk about timeline. So uh, number five one, the last one would be the timeline. So if I see the person twice a week, of course, um, to make it more realistic, uh, uh, I, I will not do every single session. It's not uh, down to practicality, it's not possible. So I will plan like um, every week of the two sessions, I will, I, will, I will depend on what timing and stuff. I will, I will plan for one at least. So as you can see, I start from level three, stage one. My target for them is four out of six. Four set out of six, you must hit within that 20 seconds. And probably week two, by week two, you will have six out of six. <clears throat> Next will be week three. We'll move on. You realize the once you hit six out of six, right? Then week number three, I will go for stage number two instead, which is 200% rest time instead of 300. So it's lesser, the intensity is even higher. Then of course, uh, as they progress, like week six, they'll go into stage three, level three, stage three. Start from two sets, my target, four, and followed by, hopefully by eight, uh, week number eight, you will achieve six out of six. Then probably when you deliver just uh, two sets without any rest time, uh, definitely, uh, I would say, you will see the improvement there. So of course, uh, on and off, you know, track their progress. If it, uh, just like what I shared on the uh, Smarter, if it's not workable uh, due to any reason, you might want to do some changes uh, of the goal, uh, but must be agreed upon with the athlete. Right? Yeah, uh, that's my part. Uh, any question, maybe you can uh, comment in the box. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm more than willing to answer. All right, coaches, we have uh, come to the end of Jerome's uh, this uh, presentation. So if you have any questions, uh, please leave them in the box um, within the next one minute.
If not, uh, we will move on to Coach Lai's uh, session on mixed doubles play. Thank you. I like to, I saw a Gabriel, I like the fact that you apply what you have learned. Can you share as a coach? Oh, uh, okay. The, uh, this Gabriel asked about what is the practical learning for talent identification for badminton using bio. Okay. Um, for the warm up sharing. Okay. For that question, right? Uh, definitely this is a topic, really a big topic for another day. But of course, I will uh, try to share as much. So basically, um, if you Google, right, there's this thing called uh, Compass. Uh, I can't remember as a Gabriel. You can, you can Google it about bio bending. It's basically there's a way to calculate the percentage of maturity uh, athlete have. There are studies shown that uh, girls will be hitting at a hundred percent percentile at fourteen age of fourteen. As for the male, it's up to sixteen. So uh, the takeaway is that if you are dealing with male athlete, for example, um, the potential is unlikely to use, uh, fully uh, at this uh, peak if you are doing the assessment before 16 years old, if the assessment is before 16 years old. Some of them could be early spur where they, they are hitting almost 100% uh, at a younger age. For example, if it boy something hit like 12 to 13 or some 14. So um, what I understand from the research is that uh, usually if you consider uh, uh, 90 to 95%, it's, it's considered the uh, uh, at their full maturity, then it will be uh, uh, it will be fair to judge him that this is so called the max almost the maximum potential of, of fitness level. This uh, talent, whether it's a talent uh, for for to bring in this uh, athlete, yeah. So basically, is using maturity, the percentage of maturity, a percentile to gauge instead of the absolute age number. What is the warm up sharing uh, in terms of? And how to consider the uh, warm up sharing, I would say, yeah, this one, uh, maybe, maybe for another day, lah. Yeah. Any any other question? I think important is like all the things that you shared, uh, you really need to digest and, and come out with your own because everybody could be doing different, uh, dealing with different contexts. So that's what I can say. Yeah. All right, coaches, uh, if you have no other questions, uh, we will now welcome Coach Lai to begin her sharing. Uh, yes. Okay. So I'll be uh, flashing the slides from my end. Yeah. Hi, Okay, 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 okay. 曾经也执教过国立大学 Basically, yeah, okay. So basically, a quick introduction of Coach Lai. Uh, she was formerly a Chinese, uh, this is a national women's doubles player for the China national team. And then she has been in Singapore for 20 plus years, been coaching badminton all this while. So uh, 
key number of schools that she has helped coach, uh, including the National University of Singapore, uh, River Valley Secondary School, and also Taunan Secondary, which she has been coaching for 22 years. And uh, for the subsequent presentation, a couple of points to note would be that the first, the presentation would not always be according to the points sequentially listed on the slides. However, all points will be covered. And the second thing is for the translation part, I'll be helping to translate the more general points, whereas Jerome will help to translate the most badminton specific points. Okay. Uh, 去年参加了BWF的举办的一个羽球工作坊，觉得呃，就是结合我们新加坡的呃情况呢，然后觉得新加坡的羽球普及程度从人口的比例来看，啊，普及度可以说是呃名列世界前茅了，但是。了解到的就是大家大多数都是参与，也就是啊双打、单打的项目，对混双的普及推广、培训，呃和所有的计划，呃都是没有的。因此，呃这一次呢，就是通过了这个工作坊给我的那个启发，就是呃希望。回到来能够在本地推开始的推广混双的这个项目，啊，让更多的以球爱好者了解混双的打法，给自己多一个机会，就是多参与，然后通过参与，然后增加参与呃混双的这个乐趣。Okay, translation. So. <laughs> From the, my trip to the BWF World Coaching Conference 2019, uh, one of my key inspiration has been that when considering uh, Singapore's uh, badminton development history, at the recreational level, Singapore's uh, participation level has been uh, is currently one of the top few in the world. However, uh, one of the gaps that we currently have would be the development, the underdevelopment of the mixed doubles event because uh, there is really great potential for Singapore to develop in this particular event. So this is where, uh, what, this is what I'll be sharing in the subsequent uh, sections. Yeah. Okay, can you continue? Okay. 你就能够提高自己的组织能力，因为女孩子呃的位置也是很重要。虽然不是靠呃女孩子打死人，她的负责的钱是前面，可是那个她的起到的重要的作用是组织，组织的球路的能呃那个那个提高这个的能力的功能
in both uh, attacking and defense, and in particularly particularly uh, controlling the play at the back end of the court. And in a general sense, playing big stubbles can also help raise the playing level for both male and female players so that when they go back to their gender-specific uh, events such as the male doubles, female doubles, uh, a clear benefit would be that the level of their play ability, the level of their game will also be raised. Okay, now uh, the uh,接下来要说的是混双的基本的站位配合和基本打法跑位所以现在首先要说的是进攻进攻的队形你队员的作用呢也是起到了一个组织球路所以你队员的那个职责范围进攻的时候就是要负责前面前半场的两边主要的责任也是创造机会组织球路使同伴的优势得到发挥就是因为男队员的后场有利嘛那你必须创造机会让男队员在后场能够发挥然后才能得分然后女队员如何跑位呢跑位的重点提示就是每打完一拍球的连贯意识一定要连贯像什么叫连贯呢连贯就是包括回动和跟球回动和跟球的快和慢也标志着你的连贯的好和不好连贯的好和不好也标志着你的水平的高和低的区别像通常我们的越野爱好者的区别就是打了一拍就是站在那边可是像通过训练的水平比较高的那些球员呢的区别就是我打了这一拍我会提早去跑下一拍这个就叫连贯了它能够快的原因呢
they will usually just stand at their original position after they have launched a shot, launch or return a shot. Yes, uh, Jerome, anything to add? Uh, Jerome, you need to on your mic. Sorry, okay. Press for too long. Okay, so one example like Coach Lai uh, uh, shared is that, example, the role for a female to be at the front, if how to separate a, a, a better player uh, will not to move according to the shots she returns. For example, if he's at the left hand side of the front court, she returns a, a shot straight or to the close to the middle of the, the court, right? She will not move to the entire center of the court to prepare for uh, shots to be returned every end. That's what we call the neutral position. She, she will tend to uh, recover uh, about three quarter, recover the three quarter uh, of the of the court, so close to where it stands on the left hand side, so to prepare the straight return. Where the other way around, otherwise, where she if she returns her shots diagonal from the left hand side, right, she will uh, try to at a faster speed, right, move towards the center so that you can follow through the shots if it's at the, the other end of the court, which is the right hand side. So this is how to. Uh, you differentiate a, a, a better player from an ordinary player. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Jeron. Uh, Lai Jiao Lian, you can continue next one. Thank you. Thank 所以怎么样组织球路创造自己的有利率性呢尽量打软球打软球的目的不是说在自己的手上想打死人家因为对方也是难对眼然后打软球的目的是让我方保持主动然后有更多的机会让给难对眼来发挥这个就是组织球路的一个例子就是比方这样子 okay. so Additional points on the these uh, strategies for female players in mixed doubles play would be uh, to create playing pathways, playing pathways, and to be able to orientate the formation in such a way that would benefit the team. Uh, as an example, we would we, we, be playing uh, shots that are soft, soft shots, so as to keep the rally going, uh, in order to create chances for the male player to subsequently play the this uh, smash. When the opportunity arises, uh, Joran, anything to add? Yeah, I think that's pretty much what she said. Okay, Ken, thank you. Uh, let's go to Ken. Ah, 男队员的呃，关于进攻的跑位，就是呃，范那个责责任范围，其实就是应该后场和半场，也是同样的，也是后半场的回动和跟球，也是导致连贯的快和慢。也是连贯，也是很重要。同样的打直线的，呃，打直线和打中路的，就是我进攻的时候在后场打直线和打中路的时候，我的我的回动也是后场跟半场的中间，不用回到中间，然后就这个就是回到也是三分之三分之二半场的三分之二的位置。如果你打对角，也是要第一时间回到中间。可是这个是男孩子从后面的，然后，因为当你打对角的时候，回球通常人家会回到另外一边，所以男队员也必须提高后半场的，就是移动能力，还有分球的能力。像半场的球，通常你就要保持主动，就是要分球，就是控制球的能力，就是尽量要打出去的球是。不软不硬，就是平的，不要尽量不要起高球，因为这样子才能够让自己保持一个比较呃优势的那个队形。然后同样的，其实打。
打对角也是一个很重要的球路。如果你整天直线直线，就是平衡，就是半场的球啊，你打任何时候你一打对角，其实就是也是让自己从被动转为主动，就是让自己解围的一个最好的方式和办法。你对眼其实也是一样，所以这个对角的球路就是也是打破对方的有利站位的一个很好的方式。All、right, now moving on to the strategies for male players. Okay, in terms of responsibility, the male players will move and cover the two thirds of the back end of a court, and then they need to also be good at their ability to sustain continuous play. And be able to return to neutral positions quickly. So, in terms of ability, they should develop. They should develop the ability to be able to move quickly and decisively, and be able to also distribute the shots, preferably flat shots, so as to keep uh this uh the rally that is in such a way that is beneficial for their team's uh formation. Uh, Joran, anything to add? Yeah. Um. And also, um, hitting the cross shot, right? Cross direction shots. Uh. There's two ways. Uh. Purpose of it. First will be the, uh, if you are in difficult position or passive position, by hitting cross, right, you could be getting out of trouble or even transit into offense. That's one uh purpose. Second, um,、uh, if you are in uh already in the passive uh sorry already active or a、uh, very good position, by doing that. A cross direction return, you could even get the first advantage,、uh, and hopefully subsequently you can nail the point. So that's、uh, what she meant just now. Okay, thanks, Jeron. Uh, 辣椒脸可以继续了，谢谢。Okay, 接下来说的是防守，所以防守的那个站位，像还有那个呃男女的那个范围，像女队员那肯定就是要就是以防直线为主。因为如果你打打女双，要要如果是要配合的好的时候，其实也是一个这这样的方式。可是目前当今来说，大家的女队员的那个能力都很强了，所以都能够防两边。但是混双，像通常我们本地的那种啊、呃、越野的呃羽球爱好者，肯定那个能力是很低的。所以我建议大家的就是，当你打混双的时候，只防着一边，因为直你的直线的这一边，只有你能，你必须要有这个能力来防着，不管对方的杀球是男男人还是女人在后面杀球，你一定要有防你自己这一边赛的直线的能力，然后。这一边呢，三分之二就就让给呃比较强大的男队员去打了，因为你这边是你的男队员再怎么好，你的直线他也没有人能够帮到你的，所以这个必须要做好的这一点哦。Okay, thanks, uh, Lai Jiao Lin. Okay, in terms of defensive positioning and the area of coverage for the female players, the general guideline would be to be able to defend. Their own side well, yes, uh, and be able to defend primarily straight shots at them. Even though the elite at the elite level, female players are generally able to cover both sides, but this is not normally not the case at the recreational level. So the advice to coaches is that for coaching mixed doubles at the recreational level, the female must at least be able to defend her side well, and then the other two thirds of the pitch. Leave it to the male player, which is who is the、uh, normally stronger, taller, and faster. Okay, okay, 继续了 Okay, 最后就是呃，发接发也是所有双打和混双的关键，因为所有战术的应用和贯彻，从思想上就必须从发接发就要开始落实，因为有好的开始才是有好的结尾的关键。比如，当就是打一个比方，就是当呃女方接发球的时候，然后对方不管是男女一发，通常也是先发你的后场，其实目的就是要把你拉到后场，就是让你们的队形就是从劣势开始。这个时候怎么办呢？大多数人都呃
一第一拍就把我拉到后场了。那这个时候的解决办法就是，就是可以通过跟同伴的配合，就是达到也让自己解决这一个劣势的队形。就像比如啊、呃，人家一发后场，你队员的后场，然后我不管我打我自己顺手的任何一个球，不管是杀直线、杀杀中路、劈对角。完了，说好了，我打完这个球，我就往前冲。前面的两边就是我的责任，不管对手回来的是什么球，只要在后场的，都不关我的事了。就是男队员去打了，这个就要靠配合来破解。就是比如这一个，从接发球开始，然后最后呢，然后这个是一点，然后最后呢，觉得。呃，我们今天对混双的探讨只是一个开始，希望未来能更多的有混双混双的研讨会，承办更多的有关混双的训训练营啊、呃、比赛和活动，让更多的羽球爱好者能通过更了解这个项目，呃，然后更多的参与达到。打混双得到得打混双的更多的乐趣，就是需要更多的人参与，然后教练们呢也能给自己一个提升完善自己的机会。好，谢谢大家。Okay, thanks, Coach Lai. Uh, Jerome, you want to translate the part about the Fa Tie Fa? Yeah. Okay. So basically, um, one of the very key aspect, uh, uh, to form a the rotation will be one example will be the serve and receive. So um, a very common uh, uh, practice is that the, the opponent will want to put the female player to the back court uh, at the very start, which is from service. So um, this will be very uh, uh, non-ideal for a mixed double formation because if it's a female at the back, that could be this is a lot of opening uh, for their attacks. So um, the coordination is the key where. Uh, the male and female partners must be uh, having uh, the same understanding on the same page. Where if this uh, such an incident arise, uh, the female player, one example, could counter it by uh, uh, hitting the shots and press forward. And re regardless what kind of return the the, the, the opponent will, will be, right, he will just press forward, and of course the male player will cover the back. So this is one of the way to counter and to complement um, both. Uh, the male and female play in a mixed double set setting. Yeah. Uh, you need unmute. Okay, thanks Coach Jerome. Okay, so today there has been, uh, thanks to Coach Lai, there has been uh, this uh, quite comprehensive sharing on the basic strategies, formations, roles and responsibilities of uh, mixed doubles play. So hopefully after today's sharing session, coaches can have now a more comprehensive, a better understanding of what mixed doubles play is about. And then um, that would probably, that would, could serve as a good beginning foundation for coaches to begin coaching that event. Uh, and then of course, other than coaching the event, other ways to learn about the mixed doubles events would of course be also to participate in the event itself. Uh, organize the events, mixed doubles activities, and also attend the continuing coach education uh, activities like workshop seminars concerning mixed doubles. Okay, that brings us to our end of the sharing for mixed doubles event. If you have any questions, uh, please in the next minute, uh, indicate in the Zoom chat box. Thank you. Okay, 来教练，现在接下来这一分钟是教练的发问时间。如果他们有这个问题的话，我会把他们，呃，我和 Jeron 会把他们呃翻译成英文，哎 ，sorry， 对不起，翻译成华文，然后让你来解答。